Welcome back to Switched to Linux. We are going to be talking today about the new beta release of MX-17. So beta has been released, uh, I believe it was yesterday from the time of this video, 10-6. Uh, I'm not sure, maybe late, early, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, it was uh, one of the first things there on DistroWatch today. And uh, if you have been living uh, under a bridge or you are new to Linux and you've never heard of the MX project, this is one of those, another one of those uh, distros you might look to if you want something that's, that's just familiar enough but just a little bit different. If you want something for lightweight hardware, if you want something with a lot of good stability and support behind it, um, MX-17 uh, uh, is going to be a good release. And I do not know when the final will be released. This is the first release candidate for beta. Oh, so alpha has been tested. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna have a look at uh, their website and then uh, we'll walk through that. All right, so this is the release uh, information. So just some things to keep a note. You have a 32 and a 64 bit. Again, this is uh, this is one of those very light distros. It is a distro that's based on Debian and and, uh, and Antics. It uses the XFCE desktop, so it's super lightweight. It has it does not have a lot of junk thrown in it from all over the place. This is just a very nice, uh, very good lightweight system. Uh, so this is based on the latest uh, Debian stretch build, uh, 4.9 kernels, and uh, also has the latest uh, changes and fixes from the, uh, from the Antics project, which was just released as well. Um, so we have some a lot of new packages, so LibreOffice 5.4.1, and then uh, they do have a few different MX apps in here. I'm going to be looking for these items as we look through this. I have not had a chance to really dig into this at all. I just got it downloaded, just installed it, and we're going to be having a quick look at it together uh, for the first time. Um, they have replaced... Uh, uh, Shotwell with G Thumb. That makes me happy. I hate Shotwell. <laughs> Every time I plug a camera or a phone or something, it's like, there's Shotwell. Let's import. No, stop. <laughs> um, I like G Thumb a lot better. Um, it's just because I personally don't like the automated stuff. If you are looking for a good automated pic uh, picture importing app, um, you can still get Shotwell. It is available from the uh, from the packages. It's just the default. It's going to have G Thumb instead of Shotwell. Uh, they're using FeatherPad replacing LeafPad. Um, I believe that's going to be a lighter uh, a lighter version. And uh, so they do have some new artwork and new icons, except the wallpaper we're going to see is not the final. Uh, they just, they, they indicated that. And then there's some prepackaged conky configurations. Uh, we do not have the manual for MX-17 yet. I'm guessing that uh, that should be done by the time they do finally release the, the final build. Uh, this is still beta. Um, translations are not yet complete, so if you are available for translation work, get a hold of them on their support pages and, you know, whatever. I'm not sure if they have people to do that or not. And um, also, if you're testing this out, be cautious uh, when you're utilizing the home option because some alpha users were reporting um, uh, were uh, reporting a, a bug with that, um, and it's not yet really been tested. Or if you do have a system that you can uh, test this on and give them feedback, that'd be great as well. Um, before we jump into this, uh, this is the various uh, support items. Um, let's see if there's anything else. <clears throat> So here's a little bit more about what they're what they're about there, and I'm trying to find out where's their. Uh, oh, there, there you go. If you want to contribute, uh, check out their contribute page. Um, time, talent, and funds. So there's various ways that you can contribute to these guys here as well. And so uh, that is a little bit about that. So let's go ahead and have a look at what the actual desktop looks like. Okay, so here we are. Like I said, I, I installed it and I just rebooted it and then I minimized it and turned on the record button on the video. So uh, we'll see how this guy looks. All right, so um, when we are first jump in here, we get the welcome screen. So you have the option now to show the dialogue. So it looks like it's going to show on the only the first time on startup. So if you want to see this again, make sure you hit this checkbox here. I'm sure it's in the, the um, menu there somewhere. Uh, there's a wiki about it. There's tools, tweak. Let's go ahead and have a look at what tools happens to say. 
Okay, so under tools, we have a live USB maker. That is awesome. Uh, we can create a live ISO snapshot of the running system. That is rocking. Um, that is a really cool system that I haven't seen in a lot of distros. So what does that mean? Well, you can actually take however, whatever you're currently doing, and you can create an ISO, and then you can take that ISO, put it on another drive, and boot off of that. Um, or basically make an ISO snapshot, you can save it in your archive, so it's a, effectively a full system backup, not just a traditional backup where we're gonna take all your files, but all the system stuff, you'll have to rebuild that. This will allow you to build a snapshot of absolutely everything, and this is a pretty lightweight system, so um, it's not uh, not gonna take a whole lot. Uh, we can see right now it's using, it's, it's only running on uh, just under 600 megabytes of RAM, so that's really good. Like I said, lightweight systems, now, this is not the particular system I use for my lightweight computer, um, but this is definitely one of those ones I'd use. Um, um, Mint XFCE might not be bad. I use Peppermint for mine, my lightweight PC. Uh, you could also do Linux Lite um, or MX uh, or the MX distros, um, MX Linux. Those are the ones that you are looking for if you're looking for a system like this. There's a few differences here and there, uh, like briefly, what are those differences? This one's more of a pure Debian type build uh, with a lightweight desktop. Peppermint is a little bit, uh, it's, it's a very lightweight system, uh, but it uses a lot of Ubuntu packages, some mint packages, uh, things like that. And so there's a lot more a lot more of the Ubuntu fixes in it, and that's kind of the reason why I chose it, because it gives me that same feel Linux Mint does, where everything works out of the box, but it's a super lightweight system, uh, which my little microcomputer only has uh, two gigs of RAM, so it's great. Um, this one here, this one here might even be a little bit lighter because the closer you get to the core of the Linux, which this one does, probably a little bit better. Um, we have boot repair. We have a menu editor here. So if you do want to adjust the menus, you can do that. I want to see if I can get back. Hmm. Okay, so hitting the close goes back to the previous one. Here we can manage our users. Cancel, we'll go back. If you have NVIDIA, uh, there's an NVIDIA driver installer there. Here's a Codex installer. It did not ask for the Codex on install, but I mean, I kind of, this is one of those ones where I kind of wish I'd go back through and reinstall it for you on the video. Um, I'm not going to do that, but uh, there's a lot of really nice settings uh, that you could pick. Um, do you want the uh, root administrator user? And then there's an advanced settings. Do you want to add a pseudo group? Do you want to, you know, add a variety of networking things, stuff like that? So there we are. We just installed Codex. So in theory, I should be able to play any type of uh, any type of uh, media here. Um, so here is Conky Editor. So for some basic color settings, okay. Um, let's see, network assistant, sound settings, tweak. Um, here's your package installer. Here's your repo manager. Close that out. Okay, so here's your MX uh, repos. Here's your Debian repos. Um, so I can turn on, so you can turn on your back ports. Um, you can turn on the non-free. Um, I might actually have to test this on this computer behind me. When I installed my Debian, I had to enable the non-free uh, repos to get the graphics working properly. Uh, this computer here probably wouldn't have to do that, but uh, this one here has uh, an AMD integrated APU, so I did have to install that. So it's nice so that you can do that from a single, uh, single package. And then here is individual sources. It looks like I cannot add any here. Uh, that might not be completely correct, but I don't see a quick place for me to add one. Um, but I guess once it's there, you can remove them. So that's nice. Uh, let's have a look at their package installer. This is something that uh, the new Linux user might want to consider your what package installer a system has. The reason is if you're used to Linux and you know the packages you like, you're probably going to be installing them through the terminal. You know what they are. You know how to install them. If you're new to Linux, you need a package manager that will that will, you can search for things. You can say, this is what I'm trying to accomplish. What is it? There's ways around it. Like alternative two is a great website where you can look for some of those alternatives. Uh, but let's just go ahead and search for audio player, which I'm sure there's already one on here, but let's see what we get. So this is one of those things I was talking about in Linux mint. 
And the reason I like the package manager over there is if I type in audio player, it will search descriptions in addition to package titles. Uh, but if I come in here and I type something, I don't know if I'll be able to spell rhythm box. Can I spell rhythm? I can't spell rhythm. Let's try Banshee. I can spell that. I'm just kind of searching for what is in here, and I'm not seeing the packages I'd be looking for. Okay, so here I can open these up by category. So we do have that. Um, let's see. So there's Audacity. Uh, so that's uh, a very excellent... Um, uh, very excellent editor, um, Adacious. Uh, I believe that's what Winamp turned into. Uh, I was trying to see if there's, uh, let's see, here's browsers. So in Chromium, we already have Firefox, so you can install Chromium, Google Chrome, NetSurf Opera, Pale Moon, SlimJet, Coopzilla. Okay, that's good. So you can do Cairo Doc, you can do Docky, you can do Plank. I'm a big fan of Cairo Doc these days. FTP, we have FileZilla and GFTP. Okay, there's the Kodi Media Center. Trying to see what, um, let's see, there's video. Uh, Kden Live, DVD Styler, M Player, OpenShot, SM Player. Abbey Word, Reader, Calibri, okay. So there's a lot of packages in here. Um, there's not an overwhelming amount, which is nice. Um, Handbrake, WinFF, I'm just trying to see if there's, okay, so you have Blender, you have GIMP. Okay, so it looks like uh, they gave us a basic GIMP, uh, but we do not have the full GIMP, that'd be neat. I'd have to have a look at the full GIMP there. We have Inkscape, Mirage, Scribus, Shotwell. I really don't see is any of the regular audio players that I would use. I'm going to search for video editor and I'm going to search for Caden Live. Okay, so that right there is the thing I was talking about for a new Linux user is it'd be nice if you could search in here for those. You're not, if you're not new to Linux, you know what you're looking for. That's cool. All right, so that's popular applications. Here's the Let's go ahead and let's just hit the stable repo. Looks like that's going to populate everything. So it is nice actually they have that popular applications that you could go to and you could find the ones that that you're most likely going to look for and then probably just have to come in here and update this for, um, uh, for anything else. So we're going to give this a minute here to finish updating. Looks like it's about there. All right, now let's, okay, so there we are. So there's Rhythmbox, so I can install Rhythmbox if I want that. Let's see if Banshee is available or not. So Banshee is available. Banshee's my preferred media player. Rhythmbox is more popular these days, but um, uh, some people like Clementine. So that looks like Clementine's already installed. So that's what we have already installed. All right, so that's actually nice that you have just the popular applications, or you can go from the full app. I am seeing a little bit of lagginess on this, uh, typing in there a little bit. That's quite okay. Usually you get that. All right, so let's close the tools. Let's see if that gets us back to our welcome screen. We have videos, contribute, um, popular apps. Okay, so that takes us back to where we just were. Uh, let's see what the tweak does. Okay, so there we are. So we're going to go into the tweak settings. This is actually a really cool feature because I don't know how many times you dive into a Linux system and then it's just like you accidentally break something you're like, oh boy, now what? So this, before we even go into the panel edit settings, MX16 has give us an, given us a restore and so this is in dot restore. So if I want to bring this back, I can do that. So here we are. So here is our panels. So of course your panel on your Linux, if you're new, are the you know the guys that only have docs or launchers or whatever else on them. It looks to me, let's see, is this a launcher or is this going to be like a? Um, it's the thing I always look for. Beautiful. It's a launcher. I love the fact that it's a launcher and not a pinning the application type thing. All right, so that's good. We're going to close that down. So you can decide here. Um, 
having the panel on the left is something I kind of started to get used to in Unity. Um, now, of course, Unity died. We still have a left panel in, in uh, the default of Ubuntu now. I'm um, not a huge fan of that, but uh, that's okay. You can adjust to put it on the right or on the left, so that's kind of cool. Um, you can also choose to display the panel horizontally, in which case you can put it on the top or the bottom. So if you're more used to this type of setup and you want that, uh, you do have that option as well. I'm going to go ahead and put it back to the left where it likes to be by default. All right, so under our appearance, uh, we can choose our color settings. So you can choose a variety of different settings on these. You'll see what that'll do to the panel. I'm going to go back to the basic uh, one we started with. Okay, so under your icons, we have the papyrus. Uh, papyrus. So these are kind of these uh, some of the new, more modern icons. Uh, they're not actually too bad. As far as modern icons go, I really like these. I'm still a big fan of the older style icons, but that's actually a personal preference thing. We do have some of those ones. So uh, the GNOME default icon pack would be, be those. Let's just go ahead and click through these various icons. I like the fact I can click the icons and you'll change it'll change them so you can actually see what each of these guys look like. Okay, so let's go back to the, the default one we started on. Here's your fonts. You can change your font and your font size. Let's go ahead and, uh, for the purpose of the video, I'm going to go ahead and bump these up a little bit. So you can probably read a little bit better what I'm doing on the screen. Hopefully that doesn't interfere too much, but uh, we'll do that. Actually, that's a little too big for me. I want to go a little bigger, but that's a little too big. <laughs> All right, there we go. That'll work. All right, and... Toolbar settings, um, so we have icons. So we can do icons, we can do uh, text. Let's see what's gonna get us. See if I can find any toolbar anywhere, I don't know. That might actually be here. And I'm not, not remembering what that one is. All right, so under your theme, um, there's a variety of themes you can pick from. So this guy here, you'll see what that did to the themes. And then here's a dark theme. If you like dark themes, you have very nice dark themes here. And then, of course, there's the light theme. I'm guessing this is what we had out of the box. Yep, pretty much. We're going to go with the dark theme. I like that dark theme. That's pretty good. So the Firefox dark theme tweak, uh, before we push apply, let me show you what that does. Um, there's a challenge with some things, including Firefox, where if you're using a dark theme, sometimes you'll kind of get some, some challenges in your, in your menu bars. But if I come up here and I push the tab on this, that should actually um, make the Firefox look a little bit better, considering that we're now using the dark. Okay, so... But basically, you'll see what that did is that that would, in case, that almost, I don't, now I don't use these a lot, so I don't know if that seemed to work in reverse, uh, but now I'm actually having everything light. If I turn this off, restart Firefox, I actually liked this a little bit better. Um, but I guess if you're having challenges with things showing up properly up here, you might want to turn that on. That's going to force the theme to go into the light mode. I, I kind of like this other than this blue text. I, I like this panel uh, setting a little bit better. All right, so here's your compositor. This is one of those things I saw in the website that uh, you can choose uh, compositors. So the XFCE compositor um, or um, Compton compositor. And so these will allow you to do a variety of, uh, of different settings. Um, so you can do things like blur radiuses, uh, rounding corners, just a variety of other little things you can do inside of your compositors. And so you have the options in, in here. Um, and I'm not remembering exactly how to do all of the settings in there. That's something I'd have to look up. Get back to this guy here. See if any of these are, okay, so 
Inactive windows. Okay. Whoa. So, okay, so what this is doing here is it's going to adjust what's your active windows and what's your inactive windows. And so what this is doing is setting your opacities. So here I can adjust my window decorations. So that's your decorations at the very top of the screen. So you can see if you want some nice transparency effects. You know, these are actually pretty nice. So here's your inactive windows. So bumping your inactive windows a little bit is, makes it easier to see which one is, um, uh, which ones are going where. So here is a little bit of transparency as you're moving things. And then windows during resize. And let's do some pop-up windows there. All right. So there we are. So we add a little bit of uh, transparency in there. Let's go ahead and have a look at the panel settings. Um, panel is something I generally like to adjust the alpha of as well. So if you want to go with uh, a look that it looks like there's not a panel there, you have the option to turn that all the way off. And then you have the enter and the leave. Uh, so these will uh, these will adjust your panel opacity as you go over. I'm not a huge fan of these, but uh, some people really like them. So I always come in here and turn these all the way up at 100, but I'll turn the system one down a little bit. Uh, so we can do a background color or a solid. And then here is your items inside your panel. Okay, so we have a separator at the very top. We have a clock. We have another little separator. Uh, we have the window buttons, uh, so that is whatever your open windows happen to be. Uh, we have another separator, uh, then we have our launchers. So one of the things about MX-16 is each launcher is a separate entity. Some distros will have the launcher all as one launcher and you add multiple things to it. Other ones, each one is a separate launcher. Uh, that's okay. Um, I don't have any objections to that. We have a notification area here. Um, we have another spacer or work view switcher, so I can go over here to my different work views. And then I have, um, I have my menu over here. So there we are. We have a nice, uh, nice setting there. Let's go ahead and do that. Whoa, I just clicked something. All right, yeah, let's go ahead and close that. And we're going to go ahead and close that this time. So first, uh, here's your right click. That's actually a really nice right click. So if you're looking for a good right click, particularly useful to new Linux users, is the fact that you can um, you can open folders as root. Uh, let's see, owner oh, ownership to user, ownership to root. Okay, so you can, uh, let's go ahead and make sure I didn't misspeak on that. Let's open up files. Um, right click I'm not seeing the spot they might have it but I like the option to right click and open as root it's it's more useful for um, if you're using um, uh, if you're new to Linux and you want to move things around in system files you got to be very careful but you do have the option to open as root um, in this case here though I really like that that we have uh, oh well I guess you can do that yeah yeah you do we you do have that option right there it's um, Open root Thunar here. So there we are. So now we are in documents as root. So that's uh, that's actually very, uh, very handy. It does give you the warning that you may harm your system if you're in there. But if you do need to do that, then that is an option. So I really like this uh, really more advanced context. So we can create a launcher. So basically like a shortcut if you're coming from the Windows type system. You can create a URL link. So if you want to create a, a, uh, a shortcut to one specific website, you can do that. Here's your folders, here's your documents. We have a run command, a variety of other systems. Arranging desktop, here's your desktop settings. This is one I wanted to see. Okay, so we do have a variety of other uh, uh, other desktops. Ooh, I like that, that's cool. I like that desktop, that's cool. Um, there's this guy here. It's a variety of really nice, uh, uh, really nice images here. I'm going to go with this one here. I think this will give us a good continuity for our for our system. All right. Uh, menus. There's icons. Okay, so if you do want to show icons, um, 
I wish they'd make this a little bit bigger. Uh, maybe this will be fixed in the, in the further release. Dragging this down, though. If you do like to work off the desktop like I do, you can add your home folder. Um, I'm not going to do the file system. I will do the trash. And I will do the removable devices. All right, so that's good there. Here's my menu and background. All right, so they do have a lot of transparency on them, I th or that's because they're, they're underneath this guy here. I don't know how to adjust this guy right off the top of my head. Um, like right now, I can't actually, there we are. See, it's uh, this, this uh, overlay there. It's, I don't know if that's a widget or whatever else. I need to use, um, I need to use MX a little bit more, I think. We do can change the background every 10 minutes. That's kind of nice. So this we can customize the the right click menu. All right. So even if I right click over this i can't do much with it <laughs> i like the the date and the cpu stuff there but uh i have to figure out how to move this guy out of the way it actually is getting in the way of my of my icons <laughs> actually working off my desktop i can't work off the desktop so i don't know if you're uh, if you're on the project team and you're watching this um it's probably it might be in the documentation I can't do anything with the with the date, the calendar stuff. I love the settings there. I love the fact it's there, but I can't actually get to anything there. That could very well possibly be very frustrating to somebody. Let's uh, let's see if there's uh, anything else I can figure out how to do with that guy. Hmm, no, nothing, nothing comes to mind. All right, let's go ahead and jump over to the menu. So XFCE has this very nice menu and that you can, if you want a big menu when you click it, you got it. If you want to make a kind of tiny menu, you got that. Um, that's one of the really good bonus points about it. And then when you boot up the menu, you ha can search for something. You have this favorites tab over here. Um, let's have a look at Conky real quick. There you go. <laughs> okay. So I was thinking it might be. All right. So there's your. Okay. Let's see if I can. I move this guy. Okay. So so Alt um, to move. Alt and left click. Let's try that. Uh, alt and left click is not doing anything with that. Um, yeah, this is definitely posing me a problem because I, I mean, maybe it's because I'm in a virtual box, but I can't seem to move it. It says I should be able to move it by, uh, holding alt and left clicking, but I, that's not doing anything for me. Let's just go ahead and stop it. That's what I'm going to do. So with that stopped. Now I can actually come in and, uh, get into the desktop. Looks like it's, uh, you single click. Uh, to access things. So that might be a little bit different for you. All right, let's have a look at the rest of the applications in here. All right, so application, let's see, accessories. We have bulk renaming of files. We have a search. Uh, feather pad, that's your light uh, text editor. A lot of different things. I like the fact that there's a lot of different uh, tools and utilities installed. Some people might consider it too many. Um, like I would never play all the games. I think that for me is is a downside with all of these things. I'd end up uninstalling a lot of stuff. 
GIMP, GThumb, uh, GScan to PDF. Okay, Firefox. We have a GNOME dial-up tool. I guess if you're on AOL still, that's useful. Okay, Clementine, CD Ripper, SM2, Browse and Search Videos from YouTube. Let's have a look at that. I've not seen that application before. Okay. So that's kind of cool. Kind of search for different videos and stuff right there. That's neat. Okay. All right, uh, multimedia. So we also have VLC installed, so that's good. MX tools, uh, the ISO maker, of course. We have a boot repair tool, a codex installer. A lot of tools in here to make it a very nice system. Maybe too many for some folks, but I think it, uh, it has a very nice amount of tools like uh, FB Reader. That's a very nice uh, ebook reader. Um, See, there's Orange Calendar, uh, PDF Shuffler, and then inside your settings, you have a lot of your your uh, various system settings in here as well. All right, so very nice system uh, overall. I very uh, very much like uh, like the system. Let's see, what's this one here? Nine new updates. So my update manager over there is telling me there's updates. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up and uh, and uh, let that guy uh, let that guy go. Um, but that's uh, MX17 Beta. Overall, very nice system. A um, lot of lot more software than even I'm comfortable with, but you know that's okay. It'll kind of make you feel at home. And and the good news about it is that you can install this and not have to worry about needing to install a lot of other things. All those little things are kind of going to be taken care of there for you. Uh, so that's actually good and useful. Um, Menu's nice and easy. Everything seems very intuitive. I like the various helps throughout there. I guess the only thing that uh, that for me was getting in the way is the uh, the Conky Manager, just the the date and the calendar and stuff on the desktop. I love the option for that, but I couldn't move it. I don't know if that's because I'm in a virtual box or what the deal is, but you know, pressing Alt and left clicking didn't do anything for me. So. Um, not sure if that's an error or if that's due to a virtual box or whatever else, but we closed it and took care of that. Um, overall, I mean, this, this thing's nice. This is really nice. Um, uh, I would say if I did not already have Peppermint and love Peppermint on my other computer, I'd definitely be looking at installing, uh, installing this on my other system. So that is, uh, that is MX17 Beta. Keep an eye out for the final release when uh, that shows up. And uh, until then, uh, thanks for watching. If you like the video here and you'd like to help support us, uh, don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed. Like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. And uh, if you want to help support what we're doing, check out switchtolinux.com forward slash support. And um, check the links down below. There will be some Patreon links and um, some Amazon links there down there below. So thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.